Today I'm going to show you exactly how you can create some really cute little floral designs, a wildflower painting and how to even create your own bouquet. It's really easy and I'm going to break it down into simple steps for you so that you can follow along. I'm going to be using paint pens by Artistro and these are really great because you can use them for so many different projects like rock painting, creating custom trainers, decorating your phone cases, I really want to decorate the front of my sketchbook so there's so many different things you can do with them. It's really important to prime the pens before you use them and to do this you can pump it on a piece of paper and give it a little shake as well with the cap on and that should start the flow of the paint. So anyway let's get into the video, I'm going to show you guys how to do some paintings and let's create some art. So I've got a little sketchbook next to me and I'm just going to use that to test out the colours before I use them on my painting. I'm going to start with a little pink flower and you can either copy exactly what I'm doing to make it super easy or if you want to add in a little bit of a challenge you can make your painting completely unique to you by using different colours or different flowers. There are tons of ideas online especially on Pinterest for different wildflowers if you need some more inspiration. So it's important when you're doing the stems to use one sweeping line and you can have a little bit of a practice on the spare sketch pad as well. I'll link all the products that I'm using today in the description box so feel free to go and check those out. I would say the trick to drawing wildflowers is to keep it simple. It's definitely easy to overcomplicate things but very often the simpler the better. And what I like to try and do is to, rather than having all different colours, is to keep a theme and add sets. So rather than just putting one flower in of the same colour and design, you can pop that in in different areas of the painting in different sizes and shapes. So here I've got two of the same sort of flower and design and colour, um, but I'm going to change it up a little bit and put them in different places in the painting. This is a really great way to make your painting look cohesive. So feel free to try some of these techniques out on a spare sketchbook page before you go in with the real thing. I'm trying to make sure that each line that I draw is really intentional and I'm thinking exactly where it's going to go before I do it. And I think these would be really cute for little greeting cards so if you want to send somebody just a little note to say that you're thinking of them. These are really cute designs and you can make them individual for different people as well. It's nice to add just a little bit of detail in the leaf to make it more interesting, either a little line or you can shade some of the leaves in. So because spring is on its way, I'm going to be using spring colours here. So I've already got the green and the pink and I'm adding a bit of yellow just to give it a bit of zing and I really love these pastel colours together. I'm adding a bit of a different flower shape to this one and using the round tip of the pen to just sort of go round in circles and create that random effect. Also adding flowers lower down and higher up can really add a bit of depth to the painting and make it look more interesting. And this is why these pens are really great for things like this because you can be really exact because it's got a very fine tip you can be very detailed with your work whereas normally if you're using a paintbrush there's a lot of places where that could go a little bit wrong whereas with these paint markers you can be very intentional and go in and, and just use it like a normal pen. And I love this lemon yellow colour, it's so pretty, so I'm adding that just with the pink as well, it really pops. So here I'm adding a bit of a neon vibe, just to bring the painting up a little bit. I feel like it was starting to look a little bit samey with the same greens, whereas adding that zing in really brings it to life and it just makes it pop a little bit more. 
So here I'm testing out a few different blues because I'm not totally sure which one it is that I think looks best. I've gone on the very light pastel blue because I think it really goes nicely with the yellow. And I'm trying to mix up as many different flowers and forms as I can to give it a really varied look so it doesn't look too samey. And I'm going to add in a different tone as well for the stems. So this is more of a bluey green and it's a bit darker so it's really nice in a painting to get the full range of values so we get from dark to light, from bright to dull and that's what can really um, make those brighter colours sing but also make it look more interesting and like you want to look at it for longer. But there's so many ways you could take a painting like this. You could do poppies and have a field of poppies. You could also go for more autumnal vibes uh, using reds and oranges. Or you could go for trees, different trees. I think that would look really cute as well. There's just so many things that I wanna do and not enough time. So now I feel like the painting's starting to come together a little bit. I just feel like it needs a little bit more so what I'm going to do is add just a few stems here and there in between the gaps and start overlapping them so you can see that I've gone behind the leaf and I'm just going to add little little leaves um, to give it more of a detailed look but almost acting as if it's behind the, the other floral stem. And this is a sort of design I'm imagining for the front of my sketchbook, but on a much grander scale. So that might take some time, but yeah, I'm really excited to do that. It's really important to change it up with the leaves. So you'll notice that sometimes I'll do the leaves opposite each other, almost like they're mirrored. And then other times I'll do them very randomly and staggered throughout the stem. And I think just adding a mixture of those two combinations is a really good idea. I'm just going to add a little bit of lavender in there because it's another pastel colour that works really well with the, the yellow. I don't want to add too much purple but just a little hint behind that yellow flower I think will make it really pop. So I'm just going to meld that into the green stem at the bottom half and then I'm also going to add in some other tones in the lavender, a dark purple for the shadows. So let me know in the comments what sort of projects that you guys are looking forward to making with these. You can find tons more ideas on that Amazon webpage. Okay, so I think that our wildflower garden painting is now finished. I absolutely love it. I think those colours are so beautiful. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching that come together. Let me know in the comments if you try it yourselves. I'm going to give you a few tips now on how to create your own bouquet. I get a lot of people asking me whether I use a reference photo or whether I just make them up from my own imagination. So I'm going to let you guys into some little secrets that I use to create my bouquets and some little tips that will help you make your bouquets look really beautiful. I usually find quite a few reference photos that I really like and take different elements from them. And sometimes it'll just be one flower or one stem and then I'll use that a few times in my drawing. So I like to add sets of flowers or stems, so maybe three or five. Usually I'll use an odd number. So I'll pick a flower that I like from one reference photo of a bouquet, add that in different places in my drawing, and then I pick a different flower from a different bouquet and, and so on, and that's how I build it up. And it's really an intuitive process because you have to find different areas and gaps that maybe need something else. 
and I sometimes say it's almost like flower arranging but on a piece of paper instead of in real life. A neat little trick with these markers that I want to show you is how you can blend colours. So here I'm going to blend the blue and the lilac together. So put down your first colour and then you can go in with the second colour to blend that out and it gives a really pretty effect. Also a little tip when spacing out your flowers, it can be almost natural to put them in a systemized way. So having the same amount of distance between them etc. But actually the more natural look is to very often clump them together or have uneven sides. Obviously in the natural world things are not symmetrical so we really want to try and break that habit when we're drawing. Again it can be helpful to use a reference photo with this in mind because very often to make something look more realistic is when we use a reference photo. It can also be helpful to think about a colour palette before you begin and set aside some of the colours that you definitely want to be using. Or you can just go along with the process and use what feels good in the moment. The very last stage, once I've got my main bulk of the flowers in, I go in with lots of foliage. And here I'm adding foliage in all different colours of green to really give that depth to the painting but also lots of different shapes and you'll notice that some leaves I'm filling completely in, other leaves I've left with little lines and, and creases and folds in. And the thing that I think really makes a painting pop is when you have a lot of contrast. So next to my flowers which are white, I'm going to really build up that contrast and have the darker tones right behind those flowers. And you can really bring your style with these markers. I like to go for the effect where it looks hand drawn, almost leaving some of those little scribbles in. But if you want to, you can be very neat with it or you can even go more from a cartoony angle. Um, it's totally up to you and this is where you can really show your personality in your artwork. Okay, so that's my bouquet finished. I hope that you guys really like it. It was really fun playing with these markers. I absolutely am in love with them and I can't wait to do more with them. I'd love to hear any tips and tricks from people in the comments who've already used these markers um, because obviously I've only just started using them and love them but I am a beginner too so if, if anyone has been using paint markers for a while let us guys know in the comments your best tips and tricks and I'll try to pin your comments to the top of the comment section. So I hope that provided you guys with some inspiration and ideas. It was really fun and I feel like it was the perfect way to celebrate spring coming. Have fun creating, even if it's for five minutes a day while you sip on your coffee in the morning. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!